Good morning, guys. Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to repair something like this belly band and, and below the skirt. Now, you can't repair something unless you know why it broke in the first place. So, I looked at this and I thought, okay, I can see the wood here. And so, that particular wood here, it's old cedar. It's two by eight sheets. Uh, make it two feet because if it were four by fours like sheet rock, it would be way too heavy or like plywood, way too heavy because it's that thick and it has keys in it. The keys just mean when they did this a hundred years ago, it was from 1890 to 1910, but they still kept going to about 1925 because of people having excess uh, this material in their yard, so they had to use it all up. Anyhow, what's happening here, there's no weep screed. And what's a weep screed? A, a drip screed. This is a drip screed. Drip or weep. And a lot of people think that if you go down to the ground, that's incredibly wrong. That's not bad. My, my house went to the ground too. It didn't bother me. However, that weep or drip screed uh, acts as an expansion. See, when we remove all this stuff, we'll place a weep, the drip screed, on the mud sill right below the mud seal, about an inch, because when they put their sprinklers on, we don't want it to go up the water and hit that mud seal. Otherwise, that mud seal will swell, then it'll rot, then the bugs come, the termites, and have a party. Anyhow, I'm going to start with up here. Now, when you're removing stucco over this uh, wood here, it's, it's not, it comes right off, really. Uh, and how long will that stucco lasts on a house like this. Uh, it'll last a lifetime. If you paint it every 15 years, a good quality paint, it'll last a lifetime. So what I'm prepared to do right here, I love these little tools like this, is I'm going to score this. And what does that mean when I say score it? Like the wood window right here, or the vent. There's a ventilation here. It has what we call a key here. So say I remove this chunk right here, then this chunk, this chunk, to look at what the heck is going on. Um, I have to break this part out. I'll just show you to you. Enough of that. Filthy, dusty, and unless I have my mask on, I don't want to do it because it releases silica in the air. That stuff is really bad for your lungs. Uh, anyhow, we're going to uh, break this out. We're going we're gonna to score this and score this with uh, this battery-operated uh, hammer impact gun. Okay, so when we score this right here, this will just pop right off. What will I find when I open it right here? I'm going to find some wood that's similar to that corner. It's just going to be keyed old cedar. Do I believe there's any structural damage? No, I don't. I've torn enough of this stuff off, say, to amount for 30 of these houses in the last 40 years. So I think what I'm talking about makes sense. I, I doubt I'm going to find any damage here. But then again, you throw in this odd detail. I thought, hey, man, what's that? That's not supposed to be there. This window sill right here is supposed to have a, a, a chamfer where you, the water comes here, hits here, and then drops. This piece of wood it should not be flush. So uh, what I think is going to happen under here to what actually is, I don't know because of this weird thing. Uh, somebody had an idea and they went with it. Let's see, I haven't started any of the, uh, the breakout, but let's, I'm going to just see what the heck this looks like, because you can see this, guys, you see? Listen to the sound. That's loose stucco. Listen here. That's hard. All you have to do, and you can see that vibrating. I can see a bunch of spiders in there. Uh, let me, I'm going to pull off a chunk just to give you guys an idea what the heck we got here. Now, granted, I haven't scored underneath. Okay. Now, that piece right there gives me an idea what the heck we got going on. Water's been going in here for about, oh, 80 years. So what I'm going to do is, after I remove everything, we'll, we'll show you what it looks like. And this, this piece right here, oh, that's just beautiful. That's in great condition. So 
once I remove all this, I expect to find this. How do you clean it? You can clean it with a pressure washer. You clean it with a garden hose. You can clean it a lot of different ways. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. And lastly, again, like I'm going to place that weep screed. And then I have some mesh wire. I can, if I put a piece of metal here, stucco won't adhere to metal, so I have to put some wire over. Will I wire this whole thing? I don't know yet. <laughs> Until I remove it, I can't make that decision. I have to see what's here. But I expect everything to be pretty like this. Uh, but again, like I point out to that thing right there. I don't know what they had in mind when they did that or why, but we'll find out soon enough. Anyhow, I'll show you how to put it all back together when we get to that stage. Okay, guys, we are done with explorations. I'll tell you something. What we found was um, the studs are pretty good. They're in good condition. Some of these were a little bad. Uh, for 110 years old, I think they lasted pretty well. So what we do is we took our new paper and come all the way down here. You can see it all the way here. We cover the mud sill. Now, what I originally bid was a piece like right here. And then I came back yesterday and he says, well, you know, I was talking with another guy and he said that eventually should all come off. And I said, dude, that was me. I told you that. I said, I can do the little piece right here for a certain amount of dollars. But if I were you, when you go to sell this house, you're going to get a termite pest report. They're going to say, all oh, this got to go. Then you've got to add that to the price of the house when selling and negotiate it. If I were you, I'd, I'd uh, take the hit right now and redo everything. I said, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this forever. So keep in mind, somebody might watch this and say, gee, Kirk, how come you didn't put all new brand new wood? How come you didn't put all new uh, shear wall or plywood? A lot of folks don't have that kind of money. I mean, as is, I was telling them to do, do this. And they only wanted to do this little piece. I do what I'm told, but I tell everybody what my opinion is on their house because I've been doing this forever. Okay, now that, let me see here. I'm going to show you guys something else. There was some wood that was beat up. If it's beat up, I don't want to reinstall it because that's just dumb. Not a good idea. Don't do that. So after I get my other pieces fished in, then here's what I do. We put a, a drip screed. It's going to go on top, of the, on top of the wood right here. Now, this will accept another coat of uh, stucco like this. It'll accept two coats. That's what these are. These are keys. The stucco keys into these, and that's how it adheres. But stucco is not going to key onto metal. So this 3.4 mesh, the stucco wire, it's technically 3.4, and it goes one way. Not, it doesn't go. It has a front and a back. Anyhow, we put it like so. We put it like this. That way the stucco will adhere to this also. And then the stucco, this is watertight now. Can I add more paper over this? Sure you can, guys, but that's another story. The important thing is to take the paper and waterproof it because back when they had this stuff, they had that heavy asphalt paper that they used. And some of it was in pretty good condition, but uh, to be on the safe side, we redid it. And guys, when you, when you do it, you look at all the wood. If the wood is good, leave it alone. The stucco there, we took pneumatic hammers. We took all kinds. We could not get that off. That's okay. We caulk around it and we just go around it. Here, where I took, I robbed Peter to pay Paul and took some of the good pieces to put down here. I'm going to put corners here. My corners are going to match up to this corner here. And they're going to be the same depth. And I'm going to wire this right here after we finish the wood. Then we'll show you how we plaster it. Breathe. It's so weird because it rained and now it's 102. Uh, Jay found out on his phone. What we're doing, guys, is I had to build these up and be creative or go to the store and buy some new lath, wood lath, because I needed to be out of certain parts. The fact that I got to go four inches thick here, is that a big deal in 100 degree weather? That is so weird. Weird weather. No, that's not a big deal because we are using a hot mud. And what does that mean, guys? Hot mud means it has accelerators in it. I've done a job where we went around the whole house four times. I put on six inches of this stuff. Any of you guys want to see that, I'll, 
I can put that video in the link. But it was faster for me to use skill rather than go to a material yard to, to put a piece of wood here to bring it out to the correct depth. So I'm going with my strengths. My strengths are application. Plus I don't want to uh, leave here and search for a darn piece of wood just as a template. So what we have done is we put mesh here. We've got mesh here. We've caulked the window. We put a weep on the bottom. We've aligned that corner, aligned these corners. I put weldcrete on here. It's a bonding agent for uh, exteriors. And I'm just going to recoat that. Guys, if, a, if stucco won't come off in an area and you force it, what will happen is you will destroy the shear wall. I wasn't sure if you guys could hear me. I got a, a weed eater, a blower guy right next to me trying to drown me out. Anyway, um, there's a lot of things that we're doing that can't be explained. Uh, I'll miss a lot of things, guys, like this mud here. Um, it's got to be a certain thickness, a certain set in order to apply it. What I'm going to do is, okay, see that's, that's done there. I'm doing the big part first because if I hit it on this wood, this wood is going to suck the, the moisture right out of here. And with the temperature we have today, we don't want that. It is too hot to put this on the wood right now. So the best thing to do is get this. Go ahead, Lou. Uh, fill it up. Fill it up. Uh, I'll it. Uh, and pull this stuff around because this is setting. All right, I get it. All right, that's setting. And see, for well, the mud to adhere like this, it's got to be rich and it's got to have. You see how high it's getting within five minutes? That means it's setting. I like it. When it's setting this fast, it can go that depth. And the new mud is a little soupier. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm just going to show you a little bit more because Jay is going to plaster with me. And he's on the camera right now. Uh, so, over here. Now, one thing. I'm going over metal here. This is going to take a while to dry. But as soon as I touch this wood, it's going to suck right in. See, I'm going over the wood now. And the wood, we sprayed it, cleaned it with water. And within... 10 minutes, this stuff dried, it's so hot. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and Jay's gonna help me spread this out. When we're done, we'll show you how we match this finish too. All right, guys, it is the end of the day. Now, I was gonna show you guys how we float this, but we're doing several things on this job. So we floated it, we brought the sand out, the aggregate, that's what this is for. You, you, you bring the sand out. But since that's done now, I left nothing but the simple part to show you a dash finish. Because this right here, that's a dash finish, guys. And so, here's how you dash. Like the, the old saying, a dash of salt. You, you take some soup and watch my hands. See, I, I'm taking this brush. I'm turning it as I dash. You'll, I don't know if you care to see that, but that's how I do it. But there's a lot of ways to dash. Now, I, I, I got soupy mud there, and I'll, I'll do a zoom in in a second. But you see, we throw it on. I turn it, turn it, because the mud brush, the dash brush, has got mud, so we, we kind of fling it around. And this texture here cannot be achieved unless you dash it. And that's, that's what this brush is, and that's why we make... This soupy mud right here. 
See that kind of soup? That's, uh, you take the same mud that you're using, you add a ton of water to it, and because I don't want to clean this vent again, I'm going to go straight up. Hey, what before, I dashed that and I just closed my eyes and threw it everywhere and then took a water hose and cleaned, cleaned that vent. One more. So you can see. And I'm going to show you another little trick in case you guys are dashing and you say, man, how the heck does he get it where it's uniform and there's not a whole bunch of blobs. You see that little blob right there? It's a little simple technique to get rid of that. You, well, there's a couple. I mean, I guess it's endless, like how to do this wall here. I can do this about 20 different ways. What's the easiest way? The easiest way was take it off, put the paper on it, just cover everything, don't take all the wood off. That's the easy way. We didn't do it that way. We did it the right way. We took all the wood off, then put the membrane in the back, then put the wood back on. Um, but a lot of people will just say, heck with all that, it's too much work, and repaper over everything. And that's a good temporary fix, but in the long run, it's not. Uh, but anyway, see now, now that I got it dashed, I could take the dash brush and see where these, these high spots are. We call them mountains. Okay, let's get rid of some of the mountains. Dash brush will do it. Uh, that'll do it. The float will do it. I just tap it with the float. And any big uh, goobers, slobbers, you can just get right off because when this is painted, you want it to match this. Anyway, watch this magic show. Lift up a bucket, presto, a plant. Anyway. My name is Kirk, Jason on the camera, and it's very hot today, like over 100. We thank you guys for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hi folks, Jason here, and I'm here to tell you something you probably already know. That like most content creators on YouTube, my dad and I are members of the Amazon Affiliates program. What does that mean? That means that we can show and link you to some of the most commonly used tools in the plastering trade on Amazon, like our hawks and trowels, scoops, floats, and some of the other things, our battery-operated tools for breakout and cutting, etc. Now, if you buy those tools from those links, we earn a small percentage of that. That allows us to keep making these videos and keep putting out quality content for you folks to enjoy. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk and Jay. We thank you for watching and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.